broadcasting on the BBC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the BBC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 55 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom and we've got the whole crew here today. We got Trevor, we got Damon. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Hey, Don't sound so I excited. Hey. <laughs> it's. I feel like it's been a while, David, since you've been here. Yeah, it's like I said, it's a lot of moving. Moving is not a, a short task. It will probably be at least another few months is my guess, but we're slowly getting there. Like I was telling you guys, I'm in the attic because... I have two offices, but don't even ask me why. There's, I literally took a desktop out, stuck it in the <laughs> attic, so that I actually could do this tonight, so that you know more people don't complain about taking my spot. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, 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 we appreciate you sitting in the hot attic. Yes, and Bluetooth <laughs> today, so we'll see how this all goes. All yeah. right. We yeah, are trying new ground. <laughs> yes, we are. We got we got Trevor out of the tunnel, but now you sound like you know that Damon. You're in the attic now, so Trevor's yeah. out of the tunnel, but you're in the attic. Exactly. <laughs> I, I always feel like, again, while I love you guys, I, I have to try to multitask because <laughs> it's just like I have so much going on in my life. So I try to multitask. So this, if this works out well, this is like a boon to me being able to you know kind of do eight million other things while we're talking. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you're paying attention to what we're saying. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you guys get boring. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes I have to zone out for a little bit. Oh, that's hurtful. <laughs> well, well, we'll give you breaks when we talk about Disneyland. Yeah, that's true. Or nighttime shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, either one of those. <laughs> the usual stuff. Yeah, the usual stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Let, let's let's get into it. We have a like crazy packed uh, show sheet today. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We had a lot of people email us between uh, this week and last week, or I guess two weeks ago and 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 this week. So uh, I'll, I'll read this first one here because this is more of a, a comment on our last episode. Um, we were talking about the change to uh, write a first refusal for for DVC contracts. And kind of what that meant, and, and and Trevor and I were joking that we couldn't find a, a negative for it, and we said that I'm sure some people could, and to email us if you could find something. So we got an email. <laughs> so, Good, because I didn't think about this. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I I, been, I I also think that, and I'll, let me read it first. So this is from Andrew, and Andrew emailed us, and he said, you were asking about possible downsides to Disney changing this year. Uh, there are certainly people that believe this is somehow impact, uh, uh, impacting them in a negative way. There is one way this changes things, that is a right of first refusal. Now, because Disney can use the contract, no matter what the use year is, they are more likely to take a contract that is cheap. Uh, for example, it used to be easier to sneak a cheap contract through if you got lucky uh, and you your use year didn't match a request uh, from the direct market. Now, Disney will take uh, longer to pass a right of first refusal on a cheap contract in the hope, uh, in the hope and ask for a contract will come up. Uh, this is obviously speculation, but their contracts uh, taking up to 60 days to pass right of first refusal when in the past they usually didn't take longer than 30 days. I haven't heard that, but I, I you know, I'd seen most people take it 30 days. But um, I've seen a bit of that on Facebook. I've seen people commenting that, you know, it's taking a lot longer for things to go through. And it does make sense that, you know, you know, Disney is probably dragging their feet because like uh, like Andrew said, you know, they're probably waiting for someone to come along who does want a direct contract. Well, I guess the only thing I would say against this, and this is not nothing against you, Andrew, is that this is exactly why we I, I had asked Nick from uh, DVC Resale Market to weigh in on this. Um, and I feel like he probably would have mentioned that this could be an issue, but he seemed to think that there was going to be really very little impact on the resale market. So I don't know. I, I'm not saying... I'm, Andrew, I'm not like, I promise I'm not trying to be like condescending here, but I just, for me, it's like, okay, he's the owner of the the largest DVC uh, resale company and was a former DVC rep. So I, I trust his expertise in this, but, um, you know, maybe if he gave a more in-depth answer, it, it would have involved some of this. I don't know. Well, I get what you're saying there, Tom, but um, I think from Nick's standpoint, he's looking at the the resale market overall. Um, these cheap contracts are just a fraction of the ones that are available out there, right? So um, I think what Nick says is true, but I think also what Andrew says is valid as well. So 
because Andrew's not talking about all contracts. He's specifically talking about contracts that normally would come in cheap and that you may be able to to get for for less than than other contracts that are currently on the market. But now it seems like that may not be a thing as much because Disney's going to start making use of those. Yeah, I mean, it does make sense. I just, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to shake out if they're going to be doing that or not or, you know. I, I mean, yeah. yeah. It's it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now I do know that I, I've seen DVC resale market post that buybacks are at like record highs for the past couple months. I've no idea if that has anything to do with this, but I don't know. So I I feel that you know since, since they changed this rule, I I think that Disney had a bunch of backlog that they're working through, and oh, yeah, my true. my suspicion is that that's exactly what's happening. Right? Is you know they're they're getting through all these ones that they've been trying to fulfill that now they finally can fulfill because they can adjust the user. And I think in a couple of months, you'll probably see it taper back down again. Yeah, that would make sense. That makes sense. Okay. Well, so that was Andrew. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that. Do you want to read Paul's uh, Trevor or Damon, either one of you? I, I you know, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, sure. I'll take a go at this. So, um, so Paul emailed us. He said, uh, I want to get your opinion on views about owning at multiple resorts. Uh, so he's got a quick question and a longer question. So the quick question is when owning at two resorts, what is the best option slash method for maximizing your booking at your favorite resorts of the two? Um, so, and then I, I guess he has the longer version of the same question, which is uh, his favorite resort is the Grand Floridian. And um, sorry, I'm just trying, I'm trying to, paraphrase here um he uh so I, I, he, no offense paul but i i he had sent us a really long email so i cut it down quite a bit <laughs> okay so uh yeah so so i i think what paul is saying is that he he ended up um buying a contract at the grand floridian but he also has a contract at uh copper creek and his problem is is that you uh, obviously in terms of 11 month booking window you can't combine the two uh points together so um, he's trying to figure out the best way to make use of those points. And so he's thinking, you know, do you do you bank and borrow um, within the two contracts? So like on one year, you end up staying at uh, at Grand Floridian and then the next year you stay at Copper Creek. Um, I think that's what he's getting at here is that he, he's he's struggling with um, trying to balance the the points between these two contracts so yeah um i guess tom you can probably speak to this better than i can because you actually do have contracts at two different resorts whereas mine are both at the same resort so yeah i mean i guess for me i you know it's it's one of those things where with these two different contracts and i just you know started to have two different contracts so i i don't know how i'm going to manage this necessarily in the future but um, obviously, with the booking windows, I'm going to use, you know, my home resort to book 11 months out if I know my, my date 11 months out. Uh, and then at seven months out, I'm going to, uh, I'm you know, going to book whatever else I want at that point, you know, assuming it's available, but it's or waitlist something. Because, um, you know, that's I think that's a, a good strategy to go with. I think that's what a lot of DVC members do is you book at your home resort, unless you're Damon, who gets whatever he wants, whatever he wants. But... <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know, it, it's one of those things where I, you know, I borrowed from, it's funny because I'm staying at animal kingdom my, in my, for my trip in October, but I'm actually using my Bay Lake points. And I know that doesn't make any sense, but <laughs> what, what happened was I, I booked the, uh, I booked the animal kingdom trip before, or no, I'm sorry. I booked my trip in June with my animal kingdom points for old key west this is I, this is a total mess where all my points are going <laughs> wow. but it, it made sense when it happened um and so i had already booked used those points for old key west and then so i had my bay lake points and then i used my bay lake points for uh for the animal kingdom reservation uh you know it i'm probably not the best person to talk to about this because i don't have a good strategy for it obviously <laughs> but i just don't understand why there even needs to be a strategy i mean are we you know, when you're DVC, are you really so concerned on where you stay every single time? I mean, I'm just not. I mean, there's yeah. places I'd like to stay, but I'm just not so concerned. I mean, if I had contracted two different places, I, I just don't think I care that much. I mean, you know, it depends, I guess, on how long you're going to stay. 
mean, I like split stays. You know, I, I like, you know, switching up and going different places. My wife does not, so we never do it. But I, I don't see it as a big deal. I mean, my trip is and we're going to stay at Saratoga because we booked it out because it was Thanksgiving. I, I think the only time that you really run into a huge problem is when you're talking about the holidays, um, you know, or spring break or, or something along those lines. Outside of that, I don't see it as a big issue. So again, I look at it, how do I travel? Do I travel just randomly in the summer or do I travel at holidays? I travel, you know, randomly in the summer or whenever. I don't think I care. I travel during the holidays. Maybe I care a little bit, but I mean, that's the that's the nice thing about DVC is, you know, you're going to get to stay everywhere if you want to, but you don't have to stay everywhere if you don't want to. So I don't think it matters much. So um, I, I think to, to so I, I get what you're saying, Damon, but um, what Paul is really saying is that he he's kind of like me and that he's obsessed with the Grand Floridian the same way that I'm obsessed with the Poly. So he's trying to figure out a way to use both his Grand Floridian points and his um, Copper Creek points to stay at the Grand Floridian as much as possible. Sure. So I think yeah. that then just means that you're not staying during holidays. Uh, I mean, that's like that's pretty much what it boils down to. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Is that, I, I think that is the key thing in all of this is that you really do have to look at when you are booking your time there because um, even outside of holidays also, um, apparently – um, the busy season for DVC is not over the summer. It's actually from September to December is when most people use DVC because they're also, you know, people at DVC are thinking, you know, book outside of the the normal, you know, summer and crazy times that everyone else wants to go. But also looking at things like uh, food and wine festival and the Halloween parties and stuff like that. So, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting because like I said, while I am at Saratoga, I am going to try to wait list, I think, Animal Kingdom, and we're doing a stay where I'm staying with my parents for two days, and then I'm staying with some friends after that. So I actually may try to wait list. I'd be curious to see what happens. I mean, to wait list during Thanksgiving. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Be yeah. It's going to be tough. Yeah. And, and so I, I think also to um, kind of what, so I, I, as you've been, you've been but, talking here, I've been reading through everything that Paul wrote and one of the strategies he's talking about is basically you, you book your 11 months. So you, so you borrow points to book your 11 month, but then you switch it at the seven months so that you use your, your Copper Creek points. My only concern with that though, is that you could end up with a whole bunch of points that you borrowed from a use your next use year that you can't put back into that use year. And then you got to go again. Yeah. So, so but, that, that can actually put you in a position where it's, so, yeah. so Tre Trevor, let me ask you a question. I mean, so mm -hmm. you're a Polynesian guy, right? Yeah. But I mean, how many years before you're like, mm, I'm polyed out? Like, it's going to happen. I you're mean, right. it, so yeah. again, I think when we look at DVC, you, you have to look a little bit longer than what's right in front of you. I, listen, I'm not telling anyone how to vacation. I'm just telling you, being the one that has been, you know, the longest there, is that, you know, there, there's not, you know, you're going to go different places anyway. So I, I don't know if I necessarily would worry so much about it. I mean, you know, you don't go to your favorite place if, you know, you have points there. So you're just talking about maybe going every other time or something. You know what I mean? Like with your points, you can always do some magic. You can do split stays. You could do a million different things. And I don't know. I, I don't worry so much about that personally. Like I said, the only reason I would even waitlist Animal Kingdom is because my friends are going to be there and because they always book those you know, small one bedrooms that there's like, you know, what one of or two of or whatever that is, they book them out at that 11 month. So just to be closer to them, but I'm animal kingdom now, you know, like I like it, but I'm, I'm animal kingdom now at this point. Yeah, yeah I get that. Good. Sorry. Yeah, Trevor. yeah. And sorry, I, again, you, you bring up all these really good points that I, I, I think that the, the larger message here is um to Paul is kind of what Damon says, you know, you kind of have to feel it out every time you go, I guess. But also in, in terms of inventory at uh, the Grand Floridian, I don't think they have a lot of issues with um, – or it's not on the same level as like Boardwalk where you're having to fight to get the rooms, right? Like, the, I, I, I mean, it is a smaller-ish resort. And, right. But the points are so much higher that you're – I mean, I think you're, you're partially right there. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're you're not wrong. I mean, the other solution though too is to sell your Copper Creek points and buy more Grand Flir- Floridian points. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, that's an, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's an option too. But um, I, I I'm seriously leaning more towards Damon's side of it too, which is you know try to stay there as much as you can. But I would be very careful about you know borrowing points in excess to try and you know shift shift things around to say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll pull these Copper Creek points and then book this at the Grand Floridian. Because like I said, my, my concern with that is you're going to end up as, in a position where you have like a hundred points and you have to use them by March or something like that. Yeah. And you have no means of banking them. You, like you have to use them or, you know, rent them out or whatever. And I, um, yeah, I, I think that's a lot more effort than it's worth. And it, it'll, It'll put a negative light on this whole experience, which I don't think you really want to do to yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That makes that makes sense. Um, yeah, no, so I agree, and hopefully that helps you, Paul. I, you know, I, I I know you you sent a really great detailed email, and you know, unfortunately, we can't read the whole thing because you know we're limited on time here. But uh, I we appreciate you writing in, and, and hopefully that helped a little bit. Um, but I do, so do you want to move on to to Ashley here? I don't know, Damon, if you want to read one, but I'll, I'll read it if you don't. <laughs> Oh, I think we I have lost. to take my I have to take myself off mute. You know, like I said, I got three <laughs> other windows open. Yeah, so hold on a second. <laughs> got to make sure I can get there. Okay, so Ashley writes in. Uh, I just wanted to share something that bothers me about Galaxy's Edge and Star Tours, and hear your opinion on it. As it's something I haven't seen much discussion on. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to say because I don't think it's a big deal. But that being said, it really bothers me that Star Tours is not going to be located inside Galaxy's Edge. Am I the only one that feels that way? I don't care that much, but it seems <laughs> like a shame to have them located so close yet not included. Do you think that perhaps one day Star Wars, but this is like, I don't even want to read this because it hurts my feelings. We'll take over the Muppets area and that whole section will be dedicated to Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Uh, it hurts my feelings, <laughs> but probably, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she's got like a bunch of other questions. I, I don't. Ashley you know, wrote us two emails. Um, and so oh my these goodness. are two Sorry, emails so, combined. So, yes. All right, let, let me just finish this whole yeah. part first <laughs> and then we'll part. go all yeah. right. It also kind of bothers me. This is kind of the same thing that, you know, they now have Toy Story Land at Hollywood Studios, but the Buzz Lightyear ride is at Magic Kingdom. That's because it's going to go away soon. I guess that I like things grouped together and organized like that. I, I get that. Me too. Uh, with the addition of Pandora, Toy, Land, Toy Story Land, and Galaxy's Edge, it seems like Disney is definitely making the decision to create lands with multiple rides and restaurants that they expand. What other lands would you predict Ooh, come one day and you'd like to see? That's interesting. That's a good question. <laughs> Gosh, that, that's whole a whole episode, yeah, unfortunately. That's a wait list question. Yeah, yeah, so you used so to do the wait list. We need yes. to do another wait list. <laughs> so then she says, great job with the podcast. I love listening. Don't worry about the length of the podcast. Personally, I turn them on and off throughout the day as I have time to listen. So to me, the length of the podcast makes no difference. All right. Thanks for making these podcasts great. Oh, so I read it. I get to talk first. See, that's why I yeah, like that's, reading that's, these. That's how it goes. Yeah, Perfect. You, get, you get to give your opinion first. That's true. I, I actually don't care so much. I think that the Muppets is going to go away. I think that will eventually be Star Wars Land. That's my personal opinion. Um, but, you know, I would love to see the Muppets. Cause I love the Muppets. Um, it doesn't bother me so much because it's it's so close. It, it That's the thing why it doesn't bother me. The Buzz Lightyear one in Magic Kingdom, I mean, that ride is old. Like, Talk about, like, I don't like rides going away. That ride goes away. I don't really care. I'll be honest with you. Because, again, if I'm going to go down there, the <laughs> Independence Day one is better at um, Universal. It could at least use an you. upgrade. It could use an upgrade. But it, why? But why? <laughs> I mean, because, because you know what? Because Toy Story <clears throat> Mania is the same ride, but better. That's true. Yeah, you're right. And, and even at that, there the Disneyland version of the Buzz Lightyear ride is better than the Disney World version as well. So yeah, there's... I think that that is eventually going to just go away. Yeah. Personally, I agree. Cause... I mean, yeah, if they retheme Tomorrowland, I could see them retheming it with something. Yeah, I I guess like I do see Ashley's point that you know grouping things together so makes you know how sense. Much money it, that would cost. Yeah, I mean, like, do, do we the want thing, them spending right? that money? Or do we want them doing Ratatouille, right? Because I think yeah. at the end of the day, you're talking about about the same cost. And I'm sure if they move, they would upgrade it. It's not like they would move it lock, stock, and barrel. So, I mean, maybe Star Tours they would, but man, moving something costs a lot of money. Well, and it could be worse. So, so Star Tours in again in Hollywood Studios is it's as close as it's going to get without being inside of Galaxy's Edge. I think it gets a yep. pass on that one. Um, Disneyland again. 
the Star Tours is in Tomorrowland next to Buzz Lightyear, and then and then Galaxy's Edge is behind Frontierland. Like it's it's literally it's like the, the park, other side so. of the park. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so I think they did worse there with it. But again, in terms of grouping them all together, I th- I think this is just a result of you know as time's gone on, they started off with you know they had these ideas, they had these smaller rides, and they didn't even have the idea of you know entire lands dedicated to these ips on their radar when they started doing them so it's just it's a remnant and, and kind of like you said damon you know i i feel that you know in the next 5 or 10 years as the new places get established you'll see some of these older rides phase out and get replaced with you know hopefully it doesn't even necessarily have to be anything related to an ip but just you know you know upgrade those rides, make them new, make them more interested. Because I, I do agree with you, Buzz Lightyear. Um, I hate the guns on that ride. They're so awful. Like it's, <laughs> it's, that the, ride is in bad shape, man. Things, that ride yeah. is in bad shape. And my wife's going to kill me for saying that too, because that's the ride that she rides while we go on Space Mountain. <laughs> so yeah, what are you going to do, Tom? If What do you mean? Well, isn't that what I, you, you know, do when everyone else goes on Space Mountain? <laughs> No, I, I I ride the gift shops, man. Who needs mountains? I ride the you, gift shop. You ride the gift shop. <laughs> I'm gonna make a shirt that says "Forget mountains." I ride the gift shop. <laughs> so, um, no, sorry, I, I had to say it. <laughs> you know, here's the funny thing. I was, you know, I was making fast passes for the trip in June, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I, I you know, I I want to go on Space Mountain, right? But I'm like, it's almost better for the show if I don't. <laughs> like, it's funnier if I don't. <laughs> you know. Mm. Because you guys are just going to keep giving me a hard time about it, so, you know. No, I mean, I think it would only be better if, like, you recorded it. Yeah, I mean, and I then do did that. It, yeah, then that yeah. would be well worth it. Because right. let's, let's, let's be honest. I mean, just because you're going on Space Mountain doesn't mean you're going on Rock and Roller Coaster. It just means you're going on the wussiest of all the mountains. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that doesn't really do anything for me. That doesn't like, you know, like that's not like, oh, my goodness, Tom went on a rock and roller coaster or, you know, something like that. That would, you know, that would be interesting to see. Fair point. Yeah. Um, but I, I you don't go on Tower we... of Terror either, right? Yeah. I don't do drops. That's my problem. I get very motion sick with the drop feeling. So I, I, I can't do drops. That's you're that's yeah, okay. my issue. coming with me and Damon. Oh, you really yeah. are. I mean, that'd be a, that'd be a great photo pass picture. I, <laughs> I would yeah. love to do that. That would be really funny. I mean, a video of Tower of Terror would. Oh, my, I'd, I'd pony up money. I'd start a. I'd start a GoFundMe for that. To be honest with you, for your daughter's I mean, college fund, I'll contribute. I mean, I'll know, contribute for Tower of Terror. Anything for the college fund. And uh, I would yeah, document exactly. the whole thing. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Stay tuned. F- future plans. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so I, do I get to read the next one since well, it's all really part of the same I, question? Wait, I didn't give my opinion yet, though. I got to give yeah. my thoughts are you, on this. Are, are you are you allowed to give your opinion? I mean, I think I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I think I am. First of all, I don't want Muppets to go away, but I think it's going to just based on they've been repainting but, over all the fun Muppet stuff. In But like, I'll tell you the Muppet thing in liberty square is so awesome oh i love that thing i don't think they get rid of that thing so i almost like would take that and be like okay as long as that doesn't go away (laughs) i'm kind of okay you know what i mean like i'm kind of okay with that because listen i've seen the movie eight bazillion times but like the liberty square thing is awesome because it's a little more interactive yeah no i i love that little show i i'm so glad they added that I'm just saying Muppet Vision 3D is super outdated at this point. You're talking about they're, they're not even keeping Pizza Rizzo open, and they just redid that whole stinking restaurant. I, how Who knows how much they spent on that, and it was closed for months because no one's going there. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. I, I do worry about that area. I, I really like it, but I, I've seen photos recently of them painting over all of, like, the fun nonsense that's painted on the buildings there, and that just concerns me. That just makes me think it's going to go. I don't know what they're going to do with it, though. That's the thing. It's like, what do you do with that? Um, I, I, I don't know. Are they going to put a new show in? But, I mean, it definitely needs to be updated. 3D shows do not have the same kind of, especially that one. That one is, like... I feel like they put that in there when 3D was invented, and then you go in there and you're like, "Ooh, 3D! Look at this! This is cool." You that know? was kind of the joke about it too, yeah, wasn't right? it? <laughs> it was like the Muppets invented 3D, right? Yeah. <laughs> but as far as Star Tours goes, I do think I, I, I've said this so many times in the show. I think they're missing an opportunity by not integrating Star Tours into Galaxy's Edge by having it be part of the entrance experience, kind of like the train into Harry Potter. Same kind of thing. Um, and I do think they'll do it someday. I, I, it's an easy connect, right? They could do like some back areas and, and connect it over there. But it is a little, 
you know, a kind of a, it actually would make sense if it stayed outside of the gates and then you got on it and then you ended up in Galaxy's Edge. But I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I get being bothered by those things not being there, but I guess it's part of just the hodgepodge nature of how things are going. Disney wasn't always making like, you know, super theme lands directly to a certain IP. And that's, you know, kind of more of a newer thing that they're doing. So uh, I could see how things how that would get a little a little messed up. So go ahead and Damon, Damon, read the next part, it, 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 you know, unless you fell into a box uh, somewhere in your attic. <laughs> no, I didn't. But like, I have to have like, uh, you got to give me like a little like, okay, Damon, your part's coming back up again, so I can find the window. <laughs> See, and I already closed it. See, because I got too many windows open up, I have to open up the rundown again. Because I'm always like, all right, I have it up. Though. All, all right, right, so man. there's there's Ashley's first one. Okay, so hello. Okay, we just heard from you. All right, she's like, um, is this one? Does this one come first, Tom? Yeah, that one's out of for, order. That one came first. Yeah. Oh man. She I'm sorry. I'm right. sorry. <laughs> she gives a little background how she loves the show and she's a new listener. Great. Yep. I will leave that yep. alone. So what are your top dining locations at each of the parks, including Disney Springs and the resort category? Again, <laughs> listen, Ashley, oh. this is, these are great questions, but like that's, that's a question I could go on for hours about, to be honest with you. All right. Sure. I'm going to Disney for a week with a group of 10 family and friends and we're using our points to cover the stay for everyone. Well, that's awfully nice. If this were you, would you rather stay at a three bedroom villa in Old Key West or three individual studios at Polly. That's a damn interesting question. Polly is one of my home resorts, so I'd be able to book two of the three rooms 11 months out, whereas I'd have to wait until seven months out for Old Key West, which I'm worried about availability issues. Ah, I guess it depends on when it is, to be honest with you. Which would you rather book based on room size for the group hotel and availability? <clears throat> and I just read online that the high demand for DVC is September. De- deja vu. Why didn't Trevor just tell us that? <laughs> End of January. I'm shocked at this because that's supposedly one of the slow times for the parks feel this is true well all right uh, i'm just going to talk about what i would do (laughs) go what i would do first um all right so the big thing for me recently um especially with that many people is wow i'm gonna i'm gonna get a little personal here um i need like we have a family of five one bathroom does not cut it anymore so i start to look at how many bathrooms do I get, right? So does a three-bedroom villa give us three bathrooms, the same as three studios at Poly, or is a three-bedroom villa two bathrooms? Who can answer that question? Uh, I believe every room has a bathroom. Okay, so then yeah. I'm I'm okay with that. In and there might even of, be like a common bathroom too, like a half bath. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to look it up. So, it, what, you know, whatever helps bathroom situation, shower situation, all of that, um, I don't know. I, I like a little alone time, even, gosh, even for my family if possible, right? So I don't know. I might take the three individual studios of Polly just for the separation. I guess it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, your bedrooms have doors too. I don't know. You know what? I guess for me, I'm going on points, which everyone's cheaper on points, which that's what I would do because I love saving and hoarding points. Um, that's for me. All right. So can I chime in next on this? Do it, Trevor. Gonna, uh, do it. Yeah. Okay. So – um, so as far as the bathroom situation goes, uh, Polly, I think actually wins in this case because each, uh, studio has a, the tub shower and then a standalone shower. And it's got like the, the two or the, the full bathroom and then like a half bathroom. The studio does? Yes. Yeah. The studios have a tub and then a shower. So. But only one toilet? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, it's the toilet part that's the important well, part. <laughs> but but you can still use a shower without having to take out that shower as a toilet. toilet. Is that what you're going to say? A shower <laughs> as a toilet? I mean, I guess you, you could You do. can use the toilet without <laughs> taking up the shower is what I was saying. <laughs> I guess you can <laughs> use the shower as a toilet if necessary. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I get it, Trevor. I see where I you're mean, going. <laughs> you know, he's not wrong. <laughs> you're, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> what did we learn in Finding Nemo? All yeah. drains. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, so, so it wins out there, but I feel that the, uh, the studios, um, if you had that many people going, I don't feel that the studios are a good use of space. Like you said, they are very separated and I guess it really depends on your party. If everyone's okay with, you know, it depends if you like everybody, right? Yeah. 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 So, so, so I think that's the difference is that the, the, um, the three bedroom gives you that big, um, open communal space right and it kind of gives everybody like more of a more of a house feel whereas the studios is like literally three hotel rooms side by side so um i would kind of look at i guess how your family expects to 
be interacting with each other. Like, it, you know, if they're like Damon and they all just want to be left alone and go sit in their own room, maybe <laughs> the poly's better. Um, but I also wouldn't worry too much about the whole 11th month versus 7th month thing because Oki West uh, has some of the largest inventory out there. And I don't think three bedrooms are in very high demand. So... Yeah, if you're going to go for a Grand Villa, you're probably not going to yeah. have that hard of a time getting one. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't be too worried about that. I would look more at your family situation and what you or how you think your family would rather stay together. Because, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't even factor in the, the 11th month thing in this whole scenario. Yeah, yeah. Um- all right, so we did, we we I like that we glossed over the restaurant thing. I'm gonna give my top five restaurants right now. <laughs> so, Wait, do we still have Trevor? Because if Trevor still wants to talk restaurants okay. before he leaves, yeah, you want to do, yeah, your, do, you want to do your top five? You want to yeah, do top sorry. five? Just so everyone knows, real quick. Um, so as Damon's finishing up, you know, moving into his house, I am starting a big home reno. So <laughs> I got to take off here, unfortunately. It's good that there's three um, of us, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so favorite restaurants for me would be uh, Garden Grill is number one. Um, hoop de doo is number two and dang, I can't even narrow it down for number three. Um, probably I like Skipper Canteen on my last Ooh. trip. I really enjoyed it. Um, my family disagrees with me on that, but this is my opinion, not theirs. <laughs> they don't have a say in this. Correct. <laughs> it's just your opinion. Um, yeah. Outside of that, I mean, those are like, I think... For for me, Garden Grill is the one place that we have to eat every single time now. Like we've we've really fallen in love with that place. Um, outside of that, I mean, there's oh gosh, there's been plenty of other places. Oh, sorry, I don't even know where Garden Grill is. Where the hell is Garden Grill? Uh, that's in the land, land. in Epcot. Um, yeah. Sorry, the other one that I forgot, Primetime Fifties Diner. Oh yeah, Prime Time. Yeah. Eh. All right, All right I, I'm All gonna right. do my top five now, Dan. I'm you gonna, go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna do my top five. This is a no particular order. All right, we'll see you later, Trevor. Yeah. All right, see bye. So my top five. Now, Gosh, me... I actually have to start paying attention now. Huh? I know you it's do. Yeah, me. No, yeah, I'm no, closing it's... down windows over here. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm so, good now. So now these are in no particular order. And I, I will say it's not all based on the quality of the food. Some of it is ambiance as well. So I'm going to go. <laughs> Via Napoli is, is probably my number one. And I said no particular order, but I'm going to put that up, up there. And it's so interesting coming from Jersey that... It's that so good. One, but okay. I, I, well, you haven't been yet, right? Or did you go? I've been. Yeah, it was great. It's great, though. I mean, it it's... was good, but it's no different than a regular restaurant on the corner in Jersey. But go ahead. Well, yeah, but I don't live in Jersey anymore. So, <laughs> um, so that's number one for me. Le Cellier, number two. Um, always great for for a steak. Uh, it's a super romantic restaurant. Love going there. Um, you have a kid now. That's that's definitely yeah. That's out the list. list. Yeah, that yeah. one's out the window. Um, <laughs> Whispering Canyon. Um, for the shenanigans okay. more than the food. Sci-fi dining. Love sci-fi. Okay. Um, just because where else can you sit in a car like a drive you know, like you're at a drive in and, and, and watch those cool movies. It's the best. Um, and what was my last one? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, I guess I, I, I'll put 50s. 50s primetime in there, too. I'm going to put it in there, too. I, I value ambiance as much as I value the food in a place. And so I like the places that have good food, but also have a unique kind of thing to them. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, for, for me, it's the exact opposite, right? So It's all about the food. <laughs> I, it's about the food for me. It really is. You know, as I've gotten um, a little healthier, let's say, that I do like splurging while I'm on vacation. But, you know, I don't want to come back. I have to 10 pounds heavier than I left. You know, I try to keep that at a minimum. <clears throat> so for me, it, it's more about the food than, you know, the actual location. I mean, I like the location as well, but I like to be able to go somewhere where I really enjoy the food and I kind of keep that, you know, more at a minimum. So, you know, the way that we work, you know, I would do, you know, let's say one larger meal and that would be at a place where I enjoy the food. So I like Chef Arts an awful lot. Um, oh yeah, that would know, be number me, six on my list. Yeah, I love that um, place. Morimoto is mm. definitely one of my top places. Um, I'll be honest with you, that is probably my favorite place. And, and you know, it's funny; it, it's of the same kind of vein as you would say uh, Via Napoli, because you know, now that I'm down south, 
Asian fusion food is, is a little bit harder to find, <laughs> which is why I like Morimoto. Um, gosh, now after that, see, that's where it gets interesting for me because I, I don't, you know, if I'm talking about in the parks now, where we actually like to eat in the parks. Oh, Yak and Yeti. Yeah, I forgot. I have to add I was, that on my list. I was list. waiting for you to mention yep. that one because I know it's one of your favorites. It is, Yak and Yeti. Gosh, I mean, outside of that, I'm trying to think about like, those are the places, like, it's funny, we fall into the trap of kind of going to the same places all the time. Um, I think so a lot of people I do would, that, though. Like, you go yeah. to what you know is good, right? You like, don't yep. want to take a chance on different places. Yeah, Yeah, and the thing is, like I said, it's more about, you know, where I can get food in my area versus where I can get down there. Like, so the Polite Pig, which is good food, I live in the South. It's, you know, We're not surrounded by barbecue. Of, <laughs> yes, it's not as big of an experience. But I'll say, you know, you know via Napoli, I, I would say that that probably is, is on my list now. Um, you know, again, I think our reasons are a little different. Mine is more because, you know, I think the food is just okay, right? I've had a lot better in Jersey, but because, like we said, we're not in Jersey anymore, I, I think it's probably one of the places that I enjoy eating at, um, you know, in general. I'm trying to think about what else in, you know, the actual parks that I enjoy, and it's more of just, like, pickup food. You know, I don't know if I would say that there's any particular restaurant. I would just say that those are my four places that I usually hit every time, but I'll try anywhere. Yeah, well, actually, you know what? The other thing is, what's the place, the, the quick serve that's in uh, Mexico? Oh, um, oh gosh, our fans are going to kill us for this one. I yep. know we were talking about. I, I I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> yes, that, that I would say that would end that's up being good, yeah. number five because again, we always eat there. You know, no matter what. Yeah. So I would say that would probably be um, the, the other spot that I would, I would say. Which again, I don't know the name of because we're horrible. People. <laughs> we can't remember. There's like hundreds of restaurants at Disney. We can't remember everything. And, and then again, I would probably mispronounce it anyway. So yeah. like. Um, trying to you know stay away from it. so it's those would be my spots <laughs> it's probably a good thing we're not trying to pronounce them exactly exactly so, so but what was your your thought on the uh, old key west uh, versus polly so it, go ahead sorry no i was gonna say you know i i just i'm wondering if you know you have a different opinion because you know uh, no i mean not necessarily so i you know for me i kind of what you guys were talking about I I would rather stay in the bigger room personally, but if if you feel like you need your own space, that's one thing. But for me, like we're like, and I know you guys are like this too, Damon. Where it's like, okay, we're leaving this room at seven o'clock. We're getting on the bus, and you know, oh, yeah. we're getting there for rope drop. So if you're in a bunch of different rooms, there's no guarantee you're going to be next to each other. So that's going to be a lot of coordination. For me, if you're in all in the same place. You can all eat together, especially in those, you know, yeah. Grand Villa. You got a whole kitchen. Well, well this you know. is going to be interesting for us this next time because we're staying with friends that are going to be staying in Animal Kingdom. We'll be at Saratoga. Like, it, it definitely will be coordination. Yeah. You know, I guess, again, there's a lot of information that we would need to truly make a real good decision. You yeah. know, when you say 10 family and friends, like, okay, well, are there kids involved? Are there not kids? <laughs> are, you know, how close are you with your friends? Do you like your family? What's the age difference? Are you morning people? Are they late people? Like, you know, there's a lot of other things that I think would, would make, you know, it easier for us to, to make that decision. But again, I think it comes in. I, I, I would agree with that. And, I, I you know, I'm going to stay in Old Key West uh, coming up here. Although I tell you, you know, I've been stalking the availability tool on DVC to see if I could get a different resort. No okay. offense to Old Key West. Sub, you know, I know. I think that's 100 percent disrespect to old key west is what that is <laughs> it's really it's not <laughs> to not, sh- not sugarcoat it that is disrespect to old key west well i mean maybe a little but <laughs> so part of the reason i booked old key west is because it's it's i think the it's only re- well it's cheap and it's also one of the only resorts that has two actual beds in the room in the studio so and they're the, the studios are like the biggest studios you can get yep. so and and since my my parents are coming down to to meet us for a couple days um, I was like, well, yeah, and they absolutely love Wilderness Lodge. They are obsessed with Wilderness Lodge. So I was like, maybe I could try to get a couple days at Wilderness, right? And yesterday I, I get into the DVC availability tool and what pops up is five days at Boardwalk at the end of my trip. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I, was like, I was, I was like, ooh, I don't know, man. I kind of want to do it. Well, but, and it's funny too, because this is the first trip that my daughter was like, hey, can I not sleep on a cot or in a closet. Like, <laughs> do you think I can get a real bed this time? And I'm like, nope. 
No, 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 no real too many points. You. Sorry, <laughs> I said you know too 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 many points. So you know I, I don't know what we're gonna do. We have my son's a freshman, my daughter's nine. So I really only have a few years where I can still kind of you know get her to you know, get on a cot, Sleep or, on you know, floor. one yeah. bedroom or something like that. But you know she's starting to feel like she's the left out child. So we'll see what we <laughs> end up doing next time. But this time around, we're you know we're still going. Yeah, and I, you know, I, for me, I'm doing a studio, even though it's going to be a little cramped with four of us and a baby. Um, but you know, I think that's part of why we're staying at Old Key West too, is because the rooms are so much bigger than than all the other studios. So, yep. I, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to staying at Old Key. I, I want to, you know, our, it is our goal to stay at every resort at I some would point. Agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we want to do that. And so at the same time, while I was also kind of looking just, you know, maybe if there was a split stay or something like that um, in the, you know, the available. But, I, I, you know, at the same time, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It seems like a pretty cool resort. And I know the people that love Old Key West, like, love Old Key West. Like, they're mm-hmm. obsessed with Old Key West. So, you know, I, I want to check it out for myself and see. Um, but, you know, I, and, and she's talking about Old Key West availability problems. You could get Old Key West right now for a week from now. So, I mean, they always yeah. have rooms available. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, especially if you're going to book a larger room. There's, you know, less less inventory of those, but so many more points that people don't use them as much. So, gosh, Tom, I just I'm, I'm going down this list of, of the rundown. There's a lot of stuff on here. I know. We got to speed this up. We do. Know. We got to speed it up. We got it. So I, thanks. Thanks again for writing the two emails, Ashley. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, hopefully that answered your questions. Uh, but we're, we're, let's move on to the next thing here. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about this since you've been sure. doing the reading. Uh, <laughs> so some new permits have revealed some new details about the Reflections Resort, uh, which is being built on the former site of River Country. We've talked a little bit about this before. They've already torn up all of River Country to the dismay of uh, a lot of people. Uh, you know, obviously, a lot of people that have memories there are upset about it. But um, so some new permits have come out that showed where these buildings are going to be and what, you know, where everything's going to be. Uh, so I think the, the, the real key things here are because of where it's being built, they're going to have to relocate the uh, Tricircle D Ranch, which is like, you know, where like the, the, the horses are and stuff at Fort Wilderness, which I'm trying to con- conceive in my mind why they have to do that. It doesn't 100% make sense to me, but I, I, yeah. I, I, I need to look at it on a map. Um, and then, but then they're also, um, so they're going to be moving that. Um, but Pioneer Hall, Trails End Restaurant, and most of the other amenities will stay in place. I know a lot of people are upset about the ranch, but they are moving it. I mean, it's not like they're getting rid of it completely. They're moving it. So, um, the other thing in here is that they are building cabins as well. Um, and I know the cabins are a pretty divisive issue with DVC members because the cabins are often empty and, uh, and take up a ton of points so like they sell disney sells a ton of points by having these cabins there that are not being used which can you know obviously hurt availability so uh, i don't know what you think about this um you know I, I it's sad that anything has to be torn down or moved but um you know i think i've said before on here i'm all for more dvc rooms uh you know <laughs> available yeah, to all of us so i, I agree so I, i'm okay with that too yeah and i mean i I don't care that much about the cabins. I understand why people are upset about them. I, I, I get it. And I get why they flood the, you know, the, the how they flood the market with points. And, you know, I, I always want to stay in a cabin, but it's just, it's too many points for me. It's way too many points. And that's the problem, right? So, I mean, I would love to stay in one of those cabins. Uh, they're gorgeous. I, you know, but it doesn't seem like they're building a lot of them. I think, what would I read? Nine of them, I think, for this one? Or am I making that up? Oh, I, that I have no idea. Uh,. Oh no, there's 18. I'm sorry. There's nine on each side of the resort. So okay, there's a fair amount of them. Um, but the good news is, so and also, I I think um the um the Mickey and Minnie's barbecue is that what it's called? Oh my gosh, please don't kill me, people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm having a hard time forget remembering names tonight. Uh, that got torn down, and so again, people were upset about that too. Uh, yeah, Mickey and Minnie's backyard barbecue. I was close. Hi. I was close. I almost had it. Um, so I they they did tear that down. Although this wasn't in that article, but I I, I did see a picture of it of it torn down. I I, I thought anyway, but I, I don't know. I I just it's in my mind. I'm I'm having a hard time conceiving of where this is going to be. 
And I'm also not completely sold on this resort either. I, we, we looked at the pictures of it. And given we, we've only got one picture, so. Uh, you know, it's funny. I'm just, um, you know, while I like the theme, just tell me more resorts. I'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll get to everywhere. I won't get to everywhere. Like, you know, I'm just not that concerned about, you know, they always put, you know, they always put something nice to you, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I look at the pictures, you do that. Listen, until I get there and actually, like, go to a resort, I, I can't really talk about it anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's true. I, I feel like we don't know exactly what's going to happen and how it's going to work. So, by the way, have you seen any of, like, the walkthroughs of the Riviera rooms? Because I was wondering if you had seen any of those. And... I have. Um, You're not digging it. See, I was, I was thinking maybe you'd be more I, interested. I, you know, I am and I. <laughs> I don't care as much. Again, I'm I'm at yeah, yeah. I'm at the point where, you know, I go back and forth about where I want points and what I would want to do, and I, you know, at this point, I'm just like, give me more Saratoga points, honestly. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah, give me more Saratoga points. That's what I would probably end up doing, and I don't even know at this point if I would purchase direct or not. I mean, that's kind of the way I feel. I, I don't yeah, even know yeah. anymore. I am, um, you know, again, we've been going with the kids every year. It's been 15 years. You, you know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> not that I don't yeah. like going because I do. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that I view it in a totally different, you know, way now. This, it, you give me something new, I really don't care what it looks like. I'm going to go because it's different <laughs> and it's new, and I'll let you know after. You know, I'm not worried about what they're saying about it now, if that makes yeah. sense. No, that makes total sense. you got to see it for yourself. I mean... Uh, you know, I, I've heard people talk about Toy Story Land and stuff, but I, I haven't seen it because I, I've been on like a hiatus from Disney, basically. Yep. So, which is why we're going twice this year. <laughs> so, um, we're spending two, two full weeks there this year. So, you know, that'll, that'll be good. Where I, you know, can really see a lot of that. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, it, you're right, though. Until you see it, you really can't make a judgment about it. Right. So, exactly. And that's, like I said, that's what I'm, uh, I'm kind of, you know, taking a different view. You know, my little hiatus from the show, I think I, it's kind of, you know, made me feel like, well, yeah, there's a lot of new stuff coming. Focus on that, like, and not be so concerned about where I'm staying. Listen, DVC is a great tool for me. Um, and it's, you know, fun because I can go to different places. So why not go to different places? Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, again, I'm still, uh, you know, maybe there'll be some, you know, River Country ghosts. Maybe I'm, <laughs> I, I don't know. So, you know, maybe that would be kind of cool. So, I did see in the plans, it looks like there's a lazy river at the pool there. Yes. So, yeah. A throwback. It, it, Unless right? it's got, like, you know, brownish, brackish water, it doesn't count. <laughs> it's got lake water in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think they're going lake water like they did for River Country. Yeah, so. You know how awesome it would be, though? Like, again, because just make the bottom of it that color, you know, the bottom of the concrete to be, like, that dark like color. Like, painted that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Like, you know, like how some people have pools that they paint blue or this. Hey, give me that old lake water look. Like, hey, listen, it could be chlorinated <laughs> water, you know, that's fine. But you give me that look, that would be awesome. You know what, though? I could see them doing that because maybe they theme the pool to be, like, a canyon or something or, you know, some sort of rock formations, kind of like River Country was. I really do think they're going to do an homage uh, to... I don't think uh, so. I wish. You don't think so? I don't think so. I, I, think, I, think, I think the will. Lazy River, River is the homage. I think that's, that's what you're... That's it? Yeah, that's I think it? maybe yeah. that's what you're getting. Well, it's something. I mean... <laughs> that is true. It is better than nothing. There's no doubt about that. It is cool to... Ha I mean, I, it's neat that they're having a Lazy River there because I, I'm trying to think of the resorts that even have Lazy Rivers. <sighs> Doesn't the... Is the yacht club? I've never been there. Yeah, hey, I was gonna say beach and yacht have one, right? I don't know. I've never been there. It's on my list, but it always it's, looks like too many points for me. I know it's on my list too. And we were gonna stay there for the October trip, and then my sister was like, "Well, I want to, I want to stay at Animal Kingdom, even though we've stayed in Animal Kingdom probably more than any other resort." Yeah, she me wanted... too. And I'm not even a. That's not even my home <laughs> resort. I well, now it is for me. Now yes. I own there, but. My my sister was like, I really want to see the animals and like stay there. And I was like, okay, well, we can do it. It's fine. I mean, I'm sure my daughter will enjoy it as long as she's not terrified of animals. So we'll, let's hope let's hope she's not terrified of animals. Um, but uh, yeah, so I you know I'm I'm always excited to stay there. But I you know we we want to stay everywhere. We we want to stay at every resort at some point. So yeah, you know. no, I agree. I agree. But okay, well, so let's go ahead and uh, let's. We're about halfway through, so we're we're perfect here. Um, so let's, let me do the, uh, the, the ad here for, uh, our new sponsors and, uh, friends over at, uh, DVC rental store. 
So, are you a frequent Disney visitor and want to save hundreds, even thousands, on your next Disney trip? The DVC Rental Store wants to help you book your dream vacation for less. DVC members, it's great news for you too. Want to rent your points out for some quick cash? DVC Rental Store wants to work with you, and they're currently renting out points at a record pace. For years, the DVC Rental Store has been helping guests stay at Disney Deluxe Resorts at an affordable price, while also paying members the highest price for their points. So if you want to learn more, go to dvcrentalstore.com or call 1-855-DVC-RENT. That's 1-855-382-7368. Let them know that Welcome Home sent you. Uh, you know, we always talk about this with uh, with our sponsors. Let them know that, uh, you know, you heard about them from us. And, you know, listen, this is great for DVC I'm, members. I'm actually thinking maybe this time around that my mom might do because oh, really? again, yeah. Because so, what's happening is, is that she's coming for, um, like I said, just for a couple days over Thanksgiving. Um, so, you know, last time that she came down, she ended up paying, you know, out of pocket cash for Saratoga, and it is not cheap. So I no. think this might be a better way uh, for her to do it is actually use the rental store, and then you know, wherever we go, she can rent some points. Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. You end up sav- saving a boatload of money by renting another DVC member's points. So. Uh, you know, I know we have listeners to the show that are DVC members and, and listeners that aren't. So this is a great company that helps both of you guys. So if, if you want to go to Disney and stay at Deluxe Resorts, maybe you're thinking about DVC uh, and you want to learn more about it. You want to try it out. Kind of what Damon's talking about. You don't know until you see it. Right. I mean, we when we, we stayed at a Deluxe Resort for the first time in our honeymoon. We were like, that's it. We're spoiled. There's no way we can stay anywhere else but Deluxe from now on. Right. So yeah, I, so, I would agree with that. Yeah, once you stay deluxe, it's hard to go back to well, anything else. But, but you know how I feel about the medium one anyway. I feel like it's actually it's, it's not a good use of your money. You either go low, low, yeah, right, or you go high, high. You don't the medium is totally fat, hundred percent. But anyway, so so again, that's dvcrentalstore dot com or one eight five five DVC rent. Please, uh, you know, support the people that support us. Uh, the great people over there at uh, DVC Rental Store. So, all right, now Star Wars, huh? Yeah. Why so, am I not excited? I, I'm just well, not. This, it ju- it's too far just... away from me. I think. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It's just too far away from me. I, you know, I have a couple other trips planned before this, so like, I'm just not super excited. But I think it's really just for a timing thing more than anything. And I'll be honest with you, when I go in for Thanksgiving, I'm kind of more excited about the Christmas stuff than I am about going to Star Wars. Well, you know, no, I get that. I get that. Um, I, I, I think this is pretty cool. So it's it, you weren't on the podcast last time. No, Damon, but I but heard because of the Facebook page, you're trying to take credit for something, huh? Or that, that Trevor I mean, said. Pretty listen much. back to the episode. Trevor said. <laughs> Trevor said it'll be like the first order checking your your band. And I said that's what they should do. They should use the stormtroopers to take you out. So I think it was a collaborative idea. Ooh, he brought up. I don't know. I, you know. You know. Even the way you're explaining it from your viewpoint, I'm gonna go team Trevor here. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I just I, you listen back to it, and and I, listen. I don't even care. But <laughs> uh, it just it's just kind of amazing that I, as a show we hit this on the head. I just where, yeah, and I just <laughs> think this is gonna be. Man, I don't know how you truly enforce this. This is going to be weird. Like, I I went back and kind of looked at it and like, yeah, cool, but weird. You know what I mean? You know how people get, right? You know how people get. I just think this is going to, I don't want to leave. I don't care if the stormtroopers take me out. Like, it's a great way to do it, but how are you getting people out, really? Yeah, I mean, are are they going to have to take some of these people out kicking and screaming? I mean, like. I think so. (laughs) Because so so for those that don't know, so they're gonna enforce four hour windows uh, at Disneyland, and and we still don't know what they're doing at Disney World. This is just Disneyland, but they're gonna do color wristbands, which is exactly what Trevor said they were gonna do on the last episode, and then they're gonna use stormtroopers to kind of you know push some people out, not push them. I, I but. think what's gonna end up happening is like you guys were kind of talking about is more of you're just not gonna be able to get on the rides. You're not maybe you won't be able to order food. You know maybe, maybe yeah. you can't get a drink because really you're you're not forcing people out i think what will end up happening is is that okay you can get no food you can get you can't get on rides and if a stormtrooper sees you he says something but i think yeah. that's the extent exactly they're not gonna like escort you out and and that's it says employees will turn away visitors with expired wristbands attempting to enter the the millennium falcon ride or uh what is it uh, olga's cantina yeah yeah, I don't know the right way to say that or, or docking bay seven or the you know the workshops where you can build things so if you try to get any of those places and your wristbands expired, they won't let you in. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Yep. 
So four hours, uh, you know, they're, they're saying that four hours is going to be enough time. I mean, I guess with only one ride open, probably right. I would think, but I don't know. I mean, it depends Man, how much you like to There's some big fanboys. Right? Yeah, there's some big okay. fanboys. Well, it, it's worth noting, though, this is just for, like, the first three weeks, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just from opening Which until Which is when June all the day. fanboys will be there. Exactly, yeah. It's I guarantee we... that we see a post about someone not wanting to leave and there being a problem. <laughs> I'm just, I think we will. I also, I feel like, though, no one's going to have sympathy for that person. I feel like everybody oh, gosh, would no. Like, no one's going to have sympathy for that person. No, so. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I mean, you know, it's still 14 acres, right? Yeah. Still, yeah. still big. It's still big still at big. the end of the yeah, day. It's, it's I mean, you, when you think about it, you look at, again, like, you know how I am with talking about other parks. So I look at Diagon Alley, right? Yeah. Diagon Alley is small. It's tiny. But, man, right? I'm going to tell you something. I could spend more than four hours in there. Well, and that's – and I would assume you could do that at, at Galaxy's Edge too, right? Yeah. I, I guess they're probably banking on the fact that not everything's going to be ready at that point. So, you know. Yeah, I think even not going on the, the ride at Diagon Alley, I could still spend four hours in Diagon Alley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. But that's just me. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I would assume that there's going to be a lot of that. But I, I thought this was interesting, too, that after June 23rd, they're going to go to a virtual queue. So you're not even going to be able to walk in after June 23rd either. You're going to have to log on to the app and wait in line and, basically and, through the app. And I think that's smart because, again, what ended Very up smart. happening at – you know, when Harry Potter first opened, I was at both of those openings in the first day, actually. Um, and it took them a little while to kind of figure it out. But, I mean, you were you were literally waiting at a rope until you saw two people walk out, two people walk in, right? And, <laughs> okay. and that's what was happening. Um, and, and, again, what was nice about, you know, for us was that since we were staying you know, on site, we were in early anyway, so it was not a problem for us any day. But when we would leave, which was whenever we felt like it, we knew we weren't getting back in. And, you know, because you would see two more people come in. Butter beer is a great drink, right? Like so, it sure. was. Uh, you know, I'm glad that they're doing something like this because that's not fun. You know what I mean? That's just not oh, fun. Yeah. It's like waiting for a ride to then wait on for a ride. You know, and at least yep. this way, you know, the, the, the virtual queue. I think that's a smart idea. I think that's great. And, um, well, because you can go well. about your day, you can go do other stuff, and then it'll alert you when it's your time, and then you go in. I mean, yep. it's. And I, I I tend to think that this is exactly what they're going to do at Disney World. Like, I, I think this is – they're not going to do the reservation thing. They're going to do the virtual queue at Disney World. That's what I'm thinking they're going to have, they're going yeah. to, have to do. Yeah. I, I just wonder, like, it, how long you'll have to get there, you know. Like, how much time they – like, do they go in 15 minutes? No, nah, I doubt they'll do that. Comes up. But, yeah, yeah, will it be like – you know, I guess it may be a fast pass window, like an hour. Yeah. I could you see know, that. But again, think about it. If you're somewhere else totally, it might take you a little bit to get there. So what I mean, what happens if or can you queue from outside of the park or do you have to be in that park to queue? That's a good question. Yeah. I mean, because, again, if you're talking about being in that park to queue, all right, not so bad. If you know how you can be queuing anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk about people being mad at buses? <laughs> You'll be really mad at buses if that's the case. <laughs> Well, it says on here, early morning visitors will be able to head directly into the land without a boarding pass in the virtual queue system. A status bar on the app will notify visitors when it's full and boarding passes are required. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Uh, you mean forever? I mean, no, probably for three years from now. So we can revisit that in about three years from now. Well, that's, that's what they're, they're saying Disneyland plans to stop using the virtual queue system as soon as crowds dissipate. When's uh, that going to be? Yeah. <laughs> three, three years from now. Yeah, I mean, well, Pandora is still packed, right? Yeah, Pandora is still packed too. I mean, and and Pandora, I mean, this is no offense to Avatar fans, I, I don't think is anywhere near as popular as Star Wars, right? I mean, no, I don't think that has to be offense to <laughs> anybody, to be honest with you. Yeah, someone's gonna email us and be like, "I'm the biggest Avatar fan." Uh, I speak well, the they'll, they'll be the absolutely Navi. wrong because <laughs> Avatar is nowhere close to Star Wars, so they can say whatever they want. They can say, "Please send all your emails. We're gonna just refute them and delete them." <laughs> That's funny. Um, but no, I, I just tend to think that this is how they're going to do it. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I, but they're going to have to do something at Disney World, right? I mean, there oh, well, can't just so. be I, nothing. No, I think they'll do the same thing. I, I don't see how they won't. Again, I guess the bigger question becomes, you know, do you have to be in the park or not? That will, that will make all the difference in the world. Because if they don't have to be in the park and you have an hour, I think that's going to be a lot better, you know, barring the instances where, you know, people get there late because of the Disney bus and then there'll be huge complaints um, and if you have to be in the park, then it's going to make that park crowded regardless. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So we'll, we'll see how that actually all pans out. 
I just found a line in the article, by the way, that I, I missed. It says visitors will have two hours to show up for their boarding pass entry. Okay, so that that's See, actually good. Then. Yeah, because you could like you could be back at your resort just hanging out, and you know, like yeah, like they're giving you a lot of time to get there. So that's that's pretty good. I There'll mean, still I, be someone that shows up two hours and five minutes and be mad because the bus was late or something. You know that. Yeah. The, yeah, that they the, that they won't make an exception for that person or yes. something. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I'm only five minutes late. And, you know, there's always going to be that, right? So, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, no, I, I'll be interested to see how this goes to Disney World. I think it's going to happen. Uh, it just makes the most sense. And, and I, I would before this. I mean, I think Disney's being really smart about the approach that they're taking here with the crowds. Um, well, I think they're, they're able to be because there's an app. Right. I think that, yep. you know, everything yeah. is based on the fact that we're, you know, technology has advanced enough to, to make it something, you know, like this where we do have that option. Yeah, where it's easy to use. It's right at your fingertips and, mm-hmm. and you can just easily do this. Right. So, yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I think it's it, it's a smart move. And I, I know that. I Have you gone to Volcano Bay yet or not? Oh, no. I went to Aquatica okay. instead. Remember? That's right. I, I did I want to go to uh, to Volcano Bay, but you know when I had my choice between that and Aquatica, um, and I already had the passes for Aquatica since I'm a season pass holder for Busch Gardens, it was yeah, a, yeah. a no brainer. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we we uh, uh you got a you got offered to uh, do a wolf tour next time you're at Busch Gardens. I, I, I'm 100 percent doing that. Actually, I think I'm going to end up doing it in June. I will have to get back with her. Um, but the kids were super excited, so. Shout out to our listener who who's a wolf trainer at uh at Bush Gardens. I I'm sorry I don't remember your name, but it's that was a really cool email to get. <laughs> yes, and we'll make sure we talk all about it on the show. I have to get sound bites when I'm there too to use for the show, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you definitely have to. <laughs> my, my iPhone is always full though. That's the problem that I have. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get some more space. <laughs> but um, so. You know, another thing they're doing, and this is at Disney World, this is the only thing they pretty much announced for Disney World, is they're doing what they call extra, extra magic hours. Um, and so, and this is actually happening while they started I'm at 5 a.m. Yep, no, they not started kidding, 6 a.m. No, they started 6 a.m. <laughs> I know, I said, yeah, yeah. it's funny because that's totally a me thing. Like, if they were yep. at 5, I'd be there at 5. Yeah, well, that's the thing, though. Like, these are starting at 6. You know, people will be there at like 4 o'clock in the morning, but, right? But I mean, see, that's. Here's the legitimate thing. See, I. Yeah. Of this because for me this makes like this is great because honestly people say they're going to be up at six o'clock they will not be <laughs> like i know so this right. so, so many right. people that go to disney like i just one of my friends you know went and, you know this was maybe like two years ago and i was like yeah you know we get up we you know rope drop every day oh yeah i'm gonna do that too i was like so how many rope drops did you get in none uh, yeah exactly right like <laughs> yeah because you always think you're gonna wake up early but <laughs> i do but not everyone i agree I mean, my kid wakes me up at like five thirty anyway. So I yeah, mean, but a year ago you would have been telling me something totally different. You know, once you have a wrong. kid, things definitely change. Yeah, you're you're absolutely not wrong. So, but uh, yeah, so this is happening while I'm there. So it's going to be every day from September first to November second. They're going to be open from six a.m. to nine a.m. Uh, so, and Star Wars is going to be open. Toy Story is going to be open, uh, along with uh, some other attractions as well. Um, and so it's worth noting, though, August 29th to 31st, the first couple of days it's open, it's going to be open at 6 a.m. for all guests. So these extra, extra magic hours, of course, like regular extra magic hours, are only for resort guests. So um, I, I think this is great. I've already uh, asked my wife if I could, you know, if I could do this if I, and I got permission. So <laughs> you, have to, you have to ask to get up early. Well, no. So my my best friend is also coming with me uh, for the October trip, and you know I don't want to abandon my wife with the baby. Uh, you know it's not fair for me to just be like, "Hey, I'm going to go to Star Wars while you stay here and change diapers." You know, well, I, why would you not all go? Well, I, I we can. I, I I mean we can. I I don't see why not. I mean it's I just don't know if my wife wants to deal with the crowds with with the little one, but we'll we'll see. I mean it's it's definitely possible. Okay. But yeah, so I, I'm going to do this. I, I think it'll be kind of cool, uh, you know, it's super early in the morning to go to this. I, I'm, I'm interested to see what the crowds are going to be like, because I do think a lot of people are going to take advantage of this. But like you said, I don't think so. I mean, listen, w- will there be a lot of people? Yes. But will there be as many people as as I, you know, I just I think people are going to sleep. People on vacation like to sleep. A lot of people get up early every day. They like to sleep in. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, I'll it's get a benefit early for me. Day. I like it. Yeah, exactly. I'll get up early one day at least. You see, know? see, you're, you're already you're already pulling back on it. I would be up every single day early. If it's six o'clock every day, I'm there every single day. Six o'clock, <laughs> ride Millennium Falcon. You gotta you gotta move your trip up now so you can take advantage of these. <laughs> I know because again, like you know, my trip is going to be interesting because it's in November and I want to do the Christmas stuff. That is going to put it's going to make it a difficult trip because there's going to be so much to do. You know what though? Like this could be one of those things. Cause they did that with avatar. If I remember correctly, where, where uh, they actually extended their extra, extra magic hours a lot longer. What's going what on? What's going on with you? <laughs> yeah. I'm moving boxes. Like I said, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, to multitask here. I gotcha. Um, um, yeah, no. So I, I, you know, we got that. Um, but, also, Animal Kingdom. So they are obviously anticipating large crowds in general, right? So, so they're also doing extra, extra magic hours for Animal Kingdom. So every day for uh, between August 29th and November second, Animal Kingdom will be open from seven to eight a.m. and Pandora will be open during that time. And then also Magic Kingdom will be open seven to eight a.m. Uh, daily from October uh, from August 29th to November second as well. So, I mean, they're really preparing for this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that they're definitely doing as much as they possibly can. There's no doubt about it. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, no, I'm excited about this. I think it's a smart idea. But I, what I was going to say is I think for Avatar, they expanded it. You know, they, they had those extra magic hours daily for a while. And I yeah, seem to remember months. them. Yeah, but I seem to remember them extending it. I could see them extending this into your trip, you know? Uh, maybe. Yeah, again, I, it, it's so horrible to say, but like, I'm. More concerned about Christmas stuff than I am about Star Wars, but I'm also going with like a huge Star Wars fan, so I, I don't know how this is all going to play out. It is not going to be a relaxing vacation. That that I do know. <laughs> that I do know. It's not going to be your one of your more relaxing ones. No, definitely. Not. All right. Well, um, so is anything else you want to say about that? Because the next thing on here is your is your detour that you want um, to do. We haven't yes. done a Damon's detour in like. 10 episodes at least i know because the kids are in school and i bought a house so i had no money right like <laughs> so this is this is a you know this is one of those vacations that um actually shouldn't be all that expensive so everyone knows i'm a huge dollywood fan love dollywood so the people that own dollywood park right you know dolly plus uh, you know, a big group of you know investors well anyway there's also another park called the uh, silver dollar city which is in branson missouri in ozarks uh, the other mm -hmm. park that's owned by them and it's you know obviously an old west theme we're actually going to be going out there in gosh, i'm in june i don't know we had to switch it because my son had a you know, travel swim meet so we had to switch it all around but we're going to be going out there for i want to say four nights um we're going to be doing doing two days at the park we're staying at a welch resort which i've never stayed at which should be interesting it has a water park mm -hmm. in it and um we're also doing there's a river boat um, dinner cruise as well and um you know we'll also do the regular stuff it's kind of like dollywood they have go-karting and all that stuff but anyway so four nights at this super duper nice hotel and the park tickets and the dinner cruise and all that for five of us 1800 bucks oh, which wow. i think is very very cheap that's that's reasonable yeah, yeah. that's really reasonable for so five of you. yeah so it's going to be an interesting trip so we're doing that and then obviously we're going to hilton head in august again but we August every year, so we do not stay at Disney because we have a great place to stay. So, I, you know, I'd do that. what is Silver Dollar, Dollar City famous for? Don't they have like a Mind Drop ride there? Or am I thinking of a different place? So the Mind Drop is actually at Dollywood. They have oh, this it? ride. Okay. Yep, uh, they have a ride called the Time Traveler. Okay, um, which looks really cool. Um, and I think you know it's it's generally the same sort of park that, that Dollywood terms of what they have going on i'm super excited because again not to knock anything but i would say dolly was my favorite park in the u.s without a doubt um so i'm hoping that this is just as good i mean it was voted one of the <clears throat> america's best amusement parks by usa today oh, okay. so yeah so this is not you know a you know, side of the road sort of experience this is uh, you know a real park they also have a cave there i think too marvel oh, cave cool. like yeah, it's going to be fun. So I'm going to be excited to talk about that when we come back for sure. Um, like I said, I always like doing something different. And th this Welch Resort, I'm, you know, that's the one thing about Disney is that you know you're always going to get a good room. Yeah. Right? You know that the hotel is always going to be 
fine, right? Like there's never any problem. So, you know, we went back and forth about where we were going to stay and I guess it's Welk Resort. So Welk Resort. And I think it looks pretty nice. I think it looks pretty nice. So we'll see how all that goes. And um, I'll give everyone a, you know, a full report when we get back. Nice. Yeah, I actually, uh, so I was thinking there's a haunted mine drop riot, and I thought it was there, but it's at a, some other place. Glenwood haunted Caverns. Yeah, it was it was voted the best ride, the best new ride in 2017 or 18. Where no, the heck is this? Glenwood Caverns. I don't know where it's at. Well, see, now all of a sudden I'm, <laughs> I'm already on there. the website, and I'm like, all right, where is this place? Oh, it's a Colorado, I, go... I think. I think it's Colorado. Ah, see, that's a <laughs> problem for me. That's a little far. That's a little far. I don't. I don't fly, so that's a little far for me to go. <laughs> um, but I think this would be kind of cool. So now I'm like, now I'm all about this place. It has. Wow, the picture they have on their website of Glenwood Caverns is some interesting stuff. So, <laughs> well, I guess this ride is in an actual mountain. So yes. it's inside a mountain. Wait, so did cool. you did you see the post today about the gondolas? Which post? The about them taking all the stuff off? Yeah. Yeah, they look pretty cool. Did you see the Ducktales one? No, that's that's. I can't believe I didn't see that though. Oh no, the Ducktales one is awesome. Um, it's got like uh, like uh, Scrooge is like looking over. He's got like all his money coming out. Okay, like, it's falling out, and he's just kind of looking over it. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think what else was on it. Uh, Donald's on it doing something <laughs> that's really specific. <laughs> Gosh, well, the thing is, it's it's funny because I I you know Googled it while we're talking, and I see that there's a post of it, but it doesn't have any of the stuff off of it. It just has the covering now i'm gonna actually have to look for this thing because that does sound pretty awesome oh yeah, i see it now okay yeah, yeah yeah i see it now yeah it's got screws in the money you got yep oh okay i'm i'm this looks good i'm all about yeah. this the, they were i, I was surprised because i remember they initially said that there was going to be like a certain amount and now it's like they uncovered like 55 of them yesterday and they're like all really cool they're really well done oh dude if i don't get on the ducktales one though what do i do like do i just I, keep riding to like to get on it <laughs> you're just gonna stand. You're just gonna get to the front of the line and be like, "I'm waiting for the Ducktales one." It's like, but waiting. It, it, for the... It's not really Ducktales because Daisy's there. Yeah, why? Why is Daisy there? Is Daisy not in Ducktales in the new no, Ducktales? No, she's not in the new Ducktales. I'm just. I don't know. I haven't watched it as much as you have. So, so yeah. Wait. So that like the problem is is like um that's not like that's like Karl Marx. Like I don't even know if she's in that. I'm, I'm a little. This is interesting. Now this is this is a, a whole a whole situation here. This is the whole situation that they did this, but okay. I, I I thought some of the Star Wars ones were pretty cool too. Um, you know, the, there was one with like uh, Chewie on it and a bunch of the Porgs around him. Okay, <laughs> it was just pretty funny. Um, trying to think of some of the other ones I saw. There were, I mean, there's so many of them. Yeah, I'm oh, looking. The I'm Haunted looking Mansion one. Do you see the Haunted yes, Mansion I just, one? That I just one's saw awesome. that one. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like that, that they put it in purple too. That one's that yes. one's cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny, though, because I, I'm going to tell you there's going to be a lot of crying kids, right? We know this, right? You're going to get on the gondola, <laughs> and you'll be like, no, that's not the one I wanted, and it's going to cause all sorts of drama. Like, I I, I know that for a fact. <laughs> well, you know that the, some of them aren't even themed, right? So some of them are completely blank, too. So <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, they're not all themed. They're just some are blank. So <laughs> You think that they'll end up keeping them blank? Or they think they'll know. all end up being themed? I think they'll all end up being themed. I think maybe eventually, maybe they're saving space for like future movies, like when yeah, they, of course, they, yeah, because right? you don't want to have to rip them off right until like they're falling off. So yes, it would make sense to keep some of them blank until a new movie comes out, right? Because like, I'm sure it's not that difficult Forky to do at those. some point. Yeah, you're gonna, that's true. You're gonna need Forky, right? <laughs> so. My daughter's like, I can't believe it's a fork. She's like, oh, my goodness, I feel the same way. Like Toy Story is our movie for our family, and I'm like, a fork, really. <laughs> Okay. Your kids never made like a like their own toy out of in like arts and crafts. Yeah, it's a fork, man. I don't go to the <laughs> movies to see a fork. I mean, I'm I gonna have to, but is it a spork or is it a fork? I don't know. Now, I think now, it's a fork. Yeah, the thing is, I get it. Is yeah, anything can be a toy, right? I get it, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a fork, man. Like, <laughs> it's a fork. <laughs> oh. Well, since we're bringing up uh, old uh, old uh, segments that we do, and for the new listeners, by the way, Damon's detour is that Damon likes to travel around to different theme parks, and so he has his own little segment here where he talks about the, his other adventures outside of Disney. So, yep, yep. So we also wait, 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 hold on. But, oh, okay, you're yeah. gonna, oh, you have the rumor no, no. black box now. Thank goodness. Oh yeah, you want to talk about that? Oh right? gosh, I want to talk about. That. 
I know it's going to be good. Right, so this is good speed round. Okay. Yeah, we haven't done a speed round in quite a while. So speed round is when there's too many things to talk about at the resorts that are not things that we would talk about for more than a couple minutes. So we basically do them all. And what are we going to do? How, how what's the time going to be? Usually do like I mean this should be like thirty seconds, honestly. What thirty seconds? Yeah. <laughs> No, there's way Dude, too much. You don't to have to go up like four octaves when you say that. <laughs> Thirty seconds. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of range. I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, do you want to go first on the speed round, or do you want me to go first? No, you can go first, and then I'll see how long it actually takes you. Because I always take the longest. That's why you're. You know, I, yeah, sure. I know what's happening here. I know what's happening here. All right, here we go. So, first story: new logo revealed for Hollywood Studios. I think it looks cool. I like it. It's modern. It's neat. It's different. I like that they're not changing the name. As if you listened to a previous episode of ours, we went through all of the terrible names that they were considering. And so I'm glad they're keeping the same name and the new logo looks cool. New table service restaurant to be built in Toy Story Land. This is pretty cool. Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. So it's a barbecue restaurant in Toy Story Land. It's going to be directly to the right, uh, I, I believe, of uh, or to the left of, of, of the giant uh, woody uh, statue that's there. Uh, I think it's cool how it looks. It, again, it fits the theme. I know a lot of people were like, why aren't they building Pizza Planet? But... Pizza Planet doesn't fit into Andy's backyard. So, and that's what the theme of the land is. So, I think this is cool. I'm excited about it. I'm glad they're putting a table service in there. Now, maybe everybody can stop complaining about the lack of shade and air conditioning. New Play Pavilion in Epcot. Uh, it was revealed that there will be a return to the Animation Academy. So, that will go into the Play uh, Pavilion, which is awesome. Bringing back the Animation Academy. Uh, there's going to be a game called Zootopia Hotel Heist, which looks really cool. All the character meet and greets are going to move into there because, as we talked about, they're going to tear down all the spots that uh, where the character meet and greets are now. There's going to be an arcade. There's going to be a play area for toddlers, which I like because I have one. And there's going to be live performers in the middle as well. Last but not least, Magic Bands. So they just announced, and I'm, I'm super pumped for this, uh, they are going to now allow you, uh, before you go, to select uh character magic bands so you know the ones you usually buy in the parks they're gonna have like 30 designs that you can upgrade to for like 15 bucks uh to get uh you know designs on your magic bands and have them sent directly to you uh you know before you go and instead of buying them in the park and then activating them later so i think this is awesome i think it's a great idea i'm like wait where's buttons what do you think about buttons oh about the but i didn't put the buttons on there dude hurry up you're way over you're almost Past oh my a minute gosh. at this point. Okay, so now they have these, uh, they're fan inspired ride buttons, uh, like, uh, Meet Me at the People Mover. Uh, I saw one about, uh, about Jungle Cruise in Denial. I'm all here for it. I love it. I want a People Mover button more than anything. Okay, you're done. Done. All right, so I'm going to take far less I need, time than I need that. a drink. I need, <laughs> I need like a, I feel like I need See, a beer after. There's that. a lot of things I just don't care about. So, all right, new logo <laughs> reveal for Hollywood Shoes. I agree with you. I like the name stick, right? But I don't care about logos, right? As long as the name stick, you know, I'm good. <laughs> Um, Except for our logo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, so the new table service. You know, listen, here's the thing. While I don't necessarily do barbecue on vacation, there's a lot of people that barbecue is just the go-to because you know what to expect. So I'm A-OK -okay with that. Again, Pizza Planet, uh, you know, again, so, sometimes I get it's his backyard, but I wouldn't mind Pizza Planet. Like, I, they could have made it so it looked like it was distance and that you're stepping out of his yard to do it. But wh whatever the case may be, the Play Pavilion could suck it. Because it got rid of McCool's. <laughs> and the fact that you had to get rid of McCool's to do this, you can suck it. Well, uh, no, that's not what's happening, though. That's The Play Pavilion is going to be at the Wonders of Life Pavilion. I don't care. It's all part of McCool's going away in my head. <laughs> Anything that changes at Epcot is is all because of McCool's. And Are you calling – wait, Club Cool? You're calling McCool's? It, Club yes. Cool McCool's? Okay. Yeah, I don't call it McCool's because it's, right, it's right. super McCool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just so upset about that. I don't care what else is going on in Epcot at this point. <laughs> Magic Band upgrade, 100% don't care. It is a waste of money. Save your money. Eat with your money. Oh you don't gosh. need cool Magic Bands. You don't. Listen, I'd rather have the $100 in my pocket to eat with than worry about what the Magic Band looks like. <laughs> and they might get lost anyway. And it's true. Um, it's true. Buttons. <sighs> Again, I think that there should be this rule that you can only wear buttons from Disney that are pre-approved that are only on your special holiday the day of and that should be that and it should be enforced and otherwise should be thrown out of the parks <laughs> um if you cannot provide documentation so while i think these buttons are really cool to wear around i don't think they should be allowed in the parks but they're they're attraction yeah, I, buttons i can't i can't I can. <laughs> but you know my feeling about buttons so yeah no i do i need i do know your feeling about buttons but these are i mean these are Wait, attraction can i, can buttons, I answer so. for trevor hold on let me see. <clears throat> yeah go, yeah yeah trevor. No, I like trevor. I, I, yeah i can't what would he say though what would trevor say New logo, um, he would like it, I think. I think he would yeah. like it. He would like the name. 
um, the table service, he would say something about, you know, it's always good to have options and yeah, more yeah, options the yeah. better. Okay. Details would play pavilion. He would like it. He would say, you know, let's see. I'm you done know. with the play. Yeah, he yeah, would, like he would say, you know, it's it's a shame that we have to get rid of stuff, but you know, we always got to move forward, sort of thing. <laughs> this, um, I mean, the only thing they're getting rid of here, though, is what's inside the the Wonders of Life Pavilion. So, <laughs> yeah, um, but it's all part of the, a big, um, the big horrible, overhaul. yeah, the yeah. big overhaul, which you know, screws Ellen and super mccools right so you can't <laughs> um trevor would definitely be on board with the magic printing upgrade he would say that it would save him time especially from being out of the country yeah and yeah. wait what was the last thing we just wait, did he oh, can't the... get magic bands anyway so oh, so he's yeah but they think that he still gets them at the resort though right yeah that's so true. he would get he... them at the resort rather than having to get yeah. the gray ones and then go to the park so he would be on board with this because they seem like a magic band upgrade family and <laughs> button wise he would like all the buttons um for sure so Trevor just likes everything. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, pretty much. There we go. That's, uh, Trevor just yeah. Trevor likes all this. <laughs> so yeah, but that's good. That's good. Tre- Trevor probably lives a better life than we do by liking everything than being upset by things. So I like most things, <laughs> except the cool rides. I mean, so you know, I, 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 I have to talk about this rumor because I'm starting okay. to get tired anyway. But like, right, this yeah, is something that I was about emphatic it. about. Yeah, so the black box interchangeable ride in the development for Hollywood Studios. So. Uh, Disney has plans for this new ride. So this is a rumor, mind you. It is just a rumor. Um, they have plans to make a new ride. It's their kind of dubbing black box, which would be a lot of screen and projection technology. But what it would do, it would, you know, you would be able to change the theming of the ride rather quickly. So I guess as different IPs come up, you would be able to kind of switch rides over, you know, to those IPs in a shorter amount of time. Um, <clears throat> They're saying that, you know, in this rumor that the ride would be trackless, free roaming, free roaming vehicles that could be reprogrammed. I don't know, maybe to shake ba- or, to, you know, slide or whatever, do something different, turn sure. based on whatever that Go idea is. Yep. Yeah. You know, again, you know, they're, they're talking about changing, you know, rides rather quickly. Okay, so I guess the, I guess we have to talk about why it's called Black Box. Is they saying that's because the appearance of the attraction when everything is turned off, it's just a big old warehouse with you know screens and a blank canvas, and no physical props. So I, I hate this. Oh man, I thought you were going to go the other way. Uh, I hate this. <laughs> so go ride Kong or Fast and Furious over at Universal Studios, and then come back and tell me you think this is a good idea. It's not. Um, a, a lot of things I find wrong with this. I mean, it, pretty much what you're telling me is you're going to make me sit through a commercial, right? That's the first <laughs> thing. And then two is that when do you change IPs? So you still have a few weeks here and there. I mean, the, the only way this would be kind of neat is if like you're talking about changing it once a month. And then it might be kind of cool, but you're literally in front of a screen. that, may, And we don't even know. If the cars can shake, rattle, and roll, we don't know anything. We don't know if they're yeah, just if sliding. If it's like the dinosaur vehicles, like the where they can like we move, don't like know. bounce. Yeah, you know. So again, you're putting me in front of a big old movie projector, and there's no animatronics for me to be like, oh wow, that's kind of cool. So why am I sitting through a commercial? <laughs> I'm 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 actually with you on this. So okay. I, I I I don't love this idea. Um. I do feel like I mean so Universal just gets crushed for this all the time, right? Because Kong is bad. I, I, bad. <laughs> I watched a video of Kong and I, I maybe it's just because I wasn't there, but I was like, what, what who's enjoying this? Like this is just It was not I, good. Well, and Fast and the Furious has gotten universally I even, Here's the yeah. thing is that I don't even think after Kong I'd even sit through Fast and the Furious to be honest. Oh really? Yeah. I, I and you know, here's the thing though. I Kong feel was like broken a lot too. That's the other really? thing. Yeah, it was broken a lot. What but breaks? God, what, what breaks the screen? The ride and the screen sync up, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, it's weird to me that they're even considering this for a lot of reasons. Because, first of all, they're, they seem to be moving away from that, right? Uh, based on the new things that they're building, I, I know that they're going to have some screens. You know, Ratatouille's a screen ride, but it, it also has a lot of physical props. Um, so, I mean, I, I feel like if you have a good amount of physical props, I'm not against the screens, but I, you know, I don't know. So, and the guardians, I guess is going to be screen, but like, it looks like all the star Wars stuff is very physical prop heavy. It's, you know, it's very much a lot of animatronics and a lot of, a lot of set pieces and, 
uh, very little just, screens. Yeah, you know? I think this is just an easy way for them to get IPs in the car. Because the question here, here's a perfect example. The DuckTales is killing, right? I mean, yeah. gosh, an Owl House looks like it's going to be a phenomenal show, you know, Amphibia as well, but like Owl House looks crazy. So the thing is, is that as they go through, I mean, who wouldn't love Gravity Falls, right? And I think that's what it's about at this point. Like, hey, just to say we have, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. there's a Gravity Falls ride, right? It's this black box. Or, you know, when they have these highly, you know, acclaimed shows, I mean, stuff that's winning Emmys. I mean, honestly, at this point, sure, right? Like, sure. you know, how do you get it in the park? You know, or how do you getting... do it quickly and cheaply, right? Yeah, because think about it. I mean, Gravity Falls was, what, a two-year thing? Right? I want to say it ran for two years. It was one season, two years. I, I, let's call it two years. I could be wrong. Someone will let me know. I mean, DuckTales, I mean, how many <laughs> years does it really have, right? I mean, as we know, for a lot of Disney shows, what ends up happening with Disney shows is they sign a lot of three-year contracts. Um, not necessarily for the animation stuff, but for the live-action stuff, which is why you see a lot of three-season shows out of Disney. So, you know, the thing is, is that when you have three seasons of something, you're not going to dedicate a ride to it when five years from now it will be irrelevant. So I get why they're doing it, but I'm not all that, you know, listen, would I, would I wait an hour for it? Probably not. Yeah. But I mean, I get it. No, I, I get it too. I, I get the idea behind it. And, and, you know, if it's, if it's a people eater, if it's going to take people up and, you know, and, and I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's and that's fine. Maybe hey, maybe that's your new, you know, your new nap spot. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I doubt it will be that long, but yeah, I yeah, you're right. It's a, it's not a 45 minute ride like Universe Energy where you can, <laughs> you know, best, really best ride ever. Yeah, that and um, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Oh, but anyway, gosh. that's not even. <sighs> right, we're gonna wrap this up. Trevor's gonna wrap it up. I guess I'll wrap it up. Oh yeah, you want to you want to wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap this up. This is right. short. This is a short one for us. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm tired, and the attic is hot, man. <laughs> the attic is <laughs> yeah. hot. Damon's gonna die of heat stroke if we don't end. It's the funny. I should actually. <laughs> I, I should actually post on Facebook like uh, on a picture of the attic. <laughs> I, I will do that so everyone. Of can. where you're podcasting from? Yeah, That's where I'm funny. podcasting from. People will be like, "Are you for real?" <laughs> like, um, <laughs> all right, go ahead. Anyway, go ahead. so let's, let's see. So, up. yep. Uh, the email address is welcomehomepodcast at gmail dot com. Send us questions. You know, it's great to get all the questions. I mean, it makes it, you know, enjoyable for us to get on and answer those questions. So please send them over, all comments, everything like that. Uh, let's see, social media, <laughs> Facebook only. I mean, gosh, let's be honest. And let's just say Facebook at Welcome Home Podcast. I won't even mention yeah. the other ones. Um, you know, Tom has just totally pulled out the website. We have a new logo, though. We do have a new and, and I know some people don't necessarily love it, so I, you know, I want to, I want to just talk about it for a second. You want to, you want to put it out there. <laughs> I want to put it out there. What you know, my personal opinion on it is, is that you know, we wanted it to be something that was ours, and yes, not everyone is going to have the same likes and dislikes, right? It's like that with any artwork or things like that. But um, I think it kind of captures what we need to capture, and you know, it's going to look great on shirts and hats and stuff like that. Yeah, this is what I'm going to say. You know, our friends that we, we go with all the time, we always like to play jokes on them and things like that. And they're a little salty about, you know, things. So what would be absolutely wonderful is if I'm at the park, I, I told Tom, he's going to get me two shirts. <laughs> I will flip flop between those shirts every single day. So I will be wearing a shirt um, from you know, Welcome Home every day that I'm there. Um I am not going to wash them. I'll be honest with you. I'm just going to flip flop between two of them. But I'll be going in November, so it shouldn't be like super yeah, duper hot. hot. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we will be in a one bedroom. I guess I could wash it, like if I spill something on yeah, it. But if I don't spill something on it, I'm not washing it. But anyway, that all being said, it would be the best thing in the world for someone to come up and say they know the podcast, especially oh, yeah. if I'm with my friends, because they would be like all bent out of shape, which would be so funny to me because I love playing <laughs> practical jokes on people while it is. Um, the that's rhubarb funny. story has never, you know, has never died. Like we still mention it now. I think that's the best thing we've ever done at Disney. Um, <laughs> so go back and listen to the previous episodes if you don't know what that's about. And um, I think that would be great. So <laughs> the rhubarb story. Well, let me let me point out too, and this is a little sneak preview. So we we made some really nice hats, some really nice hats. Yeah, only nice and, for me and Trevor. Tom has like a grandpa hat, so but it doesn't no, even count. it's like a baseball cat, a cap. But 
So I, I it's we a made grandpa it. has a slider on the back. It's not even like a snapback or a fitted. It's got no, like one of those little metal sliders, it's, doesn't it? It's actually no, it's Velcro. It's Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse. No, that is not. even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, that makes right, my day. Listen, listen. So I, I made a bunch of these hats. So <laughs> hopefully the not all with Velcro. No one's going to want them unless they're uh, our demographic like of them. over eighty. <laughs> you'll you'll still like them. So we made these. Wait, really they're cool not hats. our hats though, right? They're not Trevor and my hats. No, no, no. Okay, you guys, sorry. You, you go. You go ahead with your Velcro hats. You guys got the cool. You know, well, the lady, the hats, ladies but... might like them too because they're a little yeah. bit. You can fit them a little bit better. They're unisex. That's why I got those. Okay. So. So I, I made all these hats, and they are embroidered hats with our new logo. They look amazing. Uh, I mean, we don't have them in our hands yet, but the the images of them look amazing. So me and Trevor gonna... got snapbacks, though. Okay, yes, but, did, yeah. but we're so I'm going to be at Disney in from June second to June ninth. I will be wearing my welcome home hat around the parks with me. I will also probably be wearing a shirt as well. And the game is going to be to find me in the parks. If you find me in the parks, you get a hat. So that's 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 what we're gonna do. Um, you know, more to come on that in the next couple of weeks here. But we have a lot of listeners, though, don't we? Well, like, I'm gonna, gonna have a max. Of of, I'm gonna have max of two per day. These are limited edition. Okay, no. <laughs> these, are, these are limited edition. We have two per day that we can give out. So, and every day I will post a hint to where I am, and you can come and find me, and I will give you a hat. Um, so, so that's the game we're gonna play when I'm when I'm down there in June. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming we'll, we'll definitely run into some listeners. I, I know we have some cast members that listen too. So, you know, I, I'm sure a cast member or two might say something to us. So that would be, cool. Dude, if I get a cool. cast so, member to say something to me while I'm there with my friends, be very cool. that would be yeah. great. That That'd would be, really be great. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Right. That'd be really cool. So, <laughs> oh, we have uh, to ask so, for reviews too. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. Fin- yeah. Finish up. Okay, your part here. <laughs> so, you know, please, you know, leave us reviews on iTunes, um, anywhere else that, you know, you listen to us from. It always is helpful, for, you know, for us. Um, makes us feel good. It's high. It makes us happy. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it makes us feel good. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you leave mean reviews, that's okay too. Because you know, listen, everyone's opinion is their own opinion, and I'm okay with people's opinions. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't hurt our feelings that much. So, <laughs> it hurts Tom's feelings. I'll be honest with you, it doesn't hurt my feelings deeply. all that much. But just so but deeply. again, again, I was a little upset that someone wanted to take my spot because I hadn't been on because I was moving. Was <laughs> Wait, did somebody post that on Facebook that they yes. were like, yeah, they were going to take your Hey, listen, if Damon doesn't come back, I can fill in for him. Like, <laughs> gosh, I can't, I can't even move yeah, before. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's what's, uh, it's a popular spot, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess so. Like, you know, this all came about like a rando Facebook group, right? Like, so. Yeah, it did. It uh, did. You should, you should, you should have been, you should have been um, around a year and what, a year, about a year and a half ago. Well, you know, there was a fourth guy that contacted me, but then what? when I messaged him later, he never got back to me. So, dun, dun, dun. yeah, I don't know what happened to that guy. The butt now. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I, I hope he listens because that'd be funny. <laughs> well, wait, listen, if you were that fourth person from a year and a half ago, we'll, we'll definitely get you on the show and we'll send you a hat, too. But, like, yeah. you know, you got you to gotta reach back out to us. Yeah, and don't try to fake it because I'll look back at my posts. I'll find <laughs> out who it is because I'm sure someone's going to email us and be like, it was me. And it's like, no, I know it wasn't our, you. That's not our <laughs> listeners. See, Tom is not. Our <laughs> listeners would never do that, so I, I wouldn't even go there. Oh, man. You're really going to – oh. Um, <laughs> I'm going to oh. hang out to dry. That's exactly oh, what I'm going to do. The show's over, right? Like, I mean, it's we're pretty done much over. <laughs> All right. I, no, I got to finish. Okay. So d- don't forget to subscribe to Welcome Home Podcast so you can be reminded every time we release a new episode. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeart Music, all sorts of places. You can find Welcome Home anywhere that has podcasts. Just search for us. And you'll find us. And of course, just a reminder to our listeners, as always, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company. And as such, any and all opinions we express on the show are our own. So contact a DVC representative, uh, a cast member for more information about anything we talked about today. A uh, big thank you f- to uh, for to DVC Rental Store for uh, sponsoring this episode. Go check them out if you want to rent out your points or if you want to you know save some money on Deluxe Resorts. Uh, again, I'm actually posting the picture now of my attic. <laughs> That's fantastic. Every, no one's going to even understand the context of that because they're not going to listen to this for a couple more days. So, uh, well, that's oh, hilarious. that's right. I'll yep. have to, that's right because um, I don't yeah, care. We're, we're literally... <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. All right, good. Uh, so join us next time for more Disney Parks the discussion and, of course, uh, more DVC talk. We hope to see you all real soon. <laughs> 
This is Skipper Albert Awall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. We do a huddle when we hit a chair. How she can cuddle is no man's affair. I looked around from pole to pole, found her in a sugar bowl.